Have you ever seen a great looking settlement and thought to yourself, I would love to import that into my save game? Or perhaps you have a settlement that you have built and feel others would love to share in its glory. Well now, with a mod called Transfer Settlements, you can do exactly that. Welcome to episode 5 of the Fallout 4 Mod Clinic. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the mod Transfer Settlements to export your settlement as a blueprint and then re-import that settlement to a completely different save. Installing this mod is not actually complicated, but there is one important step that is a little different, so I am going to show you the process. The mod does require the HUD framework and F4SE. This means it's unlikely to ever come for the consoles and you're going to need to make sure you have those mods installed and working before you install this mod. If you've got the requirements met, go along to the Nexus page, click on Files and download with Manager so that it downloads to Nexus Mod Manager. Once done, just find it in the Mod tab and activate. The actual installation process is pretty much done. There is one last thing you need to do though. You need to go along to your documents folder and my games, Fallout 4 and find the Fallout 4 custom INI. If you don't have one, create a blank one. I'm going to edit it with Notepad++ and you need to find or create a section called Papyrus in those square brackets and it needs the following information below. The actually the actual important line is this below debug information equals one. However, I recommend putting the entire block of text. You will find the description of what to type here on the front page of the mod. Make sure you have that added and save it. However, once you've done that, you have the mod successfully installed. Please note, if you've installed Fallout 4 script extender specifically for this mod, please note that you have to run your game from the script extender loader. I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's a little out of scope of this video, but if it is your first time running the game in Fallout 4 script extender mode, you have to remember to do that. This mod will not work if you just run it through the normal launcher. Once in game with this mod loaded, you will find a hollow tape in your inventory under the miscellaneous section. If you're using a sorting mod such as Valder Kills, it will probably be under Settings Hollow Tapes, and there it is, Transfer Settlements. If you can't find it or for some reason lose it, don't worry, you can craft a new one at the chemistry station under Utility. The process of exporting and importing settlements is actually quite simple, and I'm going to show you now. However, if you're using my Immersive HUD mod, you might want to toggle the heads-up display to on. It's not essential, but it does give you a nice indicator of the import and export process. You'll see it in a second. I'm, an, I'm going to do this at night time. You'll see why in a second, because it, it looks pretty cool. I'm going to go to the inventory, along to the miscellaneous section, settings, transfer settlements. It'll load up the tape and then you will get a few options. You've got export, import and a general settings options. I'll suggest you leave everything pretty much as is for now. And we are going to export this settlement. This settlement is a settlement for my character Barry and is at the Red Rocket. It's not a huge settlement, but it's big enough to actually show you the process in action. I'm going to click export this settlement to a blueprint. It will then give me an option to choose a blueprint slot. I can export and import up to 10 settlements at any one time. I'll select slot one. It will then give me a few more options. For now, leave these options as is. You can um, click export original items. Those are the items that were there and not placed by you if you want. I'm not going to do it this time. Then I click start the export. The screen will go black. And then you will see the settlement all highlighting in 
blue. These are the items that I have placed. It is scanning them. You see the little widget off to the side? Now you know why I wanted you to show the heads-up display. You can toggle that off with Immersive Hood if you want. It, it doesn't stop it from working. The scanning process will identify objects that it cannot transfer, such as wires. I'll talk about that a little later. And once it's finished the scanning process, it will then begin the export. There, it's finished the scanning, now it's exporting. You can see as it exports each item, they glow green and then fade away. That means they've been handled. And after about a minute, you get a little report telling you that you have successfully exported your settlement. It will also tell you which add-ons are required. This mod will work with settlement mods as well. Obviously, any um, games you import this blueprint to require the same add-ons. This one just has the basic ones. And I'm done. I've now exported this settlement. So now I load a different save. This is my character, Frank. And as you can see, the red rocket has had very little done to it. I'm going to show the heads-up display once again. You don't have to do this, but it allows you to see the progress widget. Go along to the settings, holotape, transfer settlements. And this time, I want to import the settlement. I've only got one blueprint possible. It will tell me where that is. If you try to do this outside of the Red Rocket truck stop, and yes, I did try, it teleports you to the Red Rocket once you start the process. It teleports you inside as well. I recommend doing it once you're at the settlement normally, though. Otherwise, it's a little disconcerting to get, you know, ripped off right into the middle of the settlement that is in the process of building. I always prefer to stand outside. Um, it tells you which plugins you need. And then you have a few more options. If the original blueprint contained the original items, you can import them if you want. I am not going to. And you can nuke the settlement before import. I'm not going to do that this time, but what it does is it destroys any items that you, the player, have already placed there. That might be an option you want to use. Uh, I will show you that in action. However, for now, I'm just going to start the import once again, the screen goes blank, and there we go. You will see the settlement begin to appear as it yes. gets built. The character will say, Hell yeah. <laughs> well, the character gets very excited Hell about the yeah. process. And when it's done, and it should be done pretty quickly, you get the little message telling you so. You and now I have the same settlement. In my frank save, it really is that easy. Now, at this point, the mod author does suggest that you save your game and reload it. That's to make sure the nav meshing works and that your followers and settlers don't get stuck in objects. Um, this is something that might actually fix itself automatically if you fast travel away. However, it's just a good practice to save the game and reload. One other thing that you should be aware immediately is the fact that nothing is wired up. If you look at all of my pylons, there are no wires. This is the one thing that he could not get exported. So once the settlement has been put in place, has been imported, you're going to need to go back into the settlement menu and manually wire up all of your electrics again. And that is the basic process in action. It really is pretty simple and it does not take very long at all. However, there are a few advanced features and a few things you might want to keep your eyes open for and I'm going to show you those now. Now, if you left some of the original items in your settlement and you want to make sure that those get exported to your new settlement as well, select the export original items option before you start the export. Apart from that, the process is identical. It will just now scan and export items that were there when you first arrived. 
And of course, when you import the settlement, remember to import original items. Make sure this one is selected before you start the import. However, once you do that, the process is pretty much nice. identical to before. You can import settlements to settlements that you've already built things in. So for example, I've built a few items around the red rocket this time, and I can still go along to my inventory and import the test settlement I exported earlier. And as you can see, it does work. I've still got the original items and the new settlement items. However, it can cause, well, some well, unexpected side effects. So, when you're importing a settlement, one of the options you have is to nuke the existing settlement. And uh, I'm going to do that right now, partly because it's useful and partly because, um, well, it's kind of a lot of fun. This time, when importing the settlement, I'm going to select Nuke Settlement Before Import. Now, when I start the import, well, you might want to get a little out of the way because it starts nuking all of the things that have been built. And yes, it, it can actually hurt you, so um, be a little careful. I don't think it actually kills any of the settlers. <laughs> And there you have it. We now have the settlement imported. All of the items that I added manually have disappeared. And pretty much we're ready to go. Now, if you want to do the same thing, but without the explosions, because they are a little dramatic, you can actually do that. Those explosions are fun, but maybe a tad overkill once you've seen it once or twice. So, if you want, you can go along to General Settings and turn off the explosions during the nuking of the settlement. Go back out, import the settlement, choose your blueprint, make sure you've got nuke settlement before import still selected, and then start the import once again. This time the nuking process will occur without all of the explosions. There you can see, if I turn the heads up display on, nuking, it gives me a percentage, but there's no explosion. It's just removing the items one at a time, and then it will rebuild it once it's done. Now, nuking may be a lot of fun, and it is a powerful feature allowing you to remove a lot of the items you've already got placed in a settlement before you import. However, I would probably recommend that you go around your settlement beforehand and manually remove or store any items, partly to keep the resources and partly just to make sure that everything is as it should be. Because New King does have a couple of weaknesses. For example, it only nukes items that have been placed since you've arrived at the settlement. Any of the original items do not get nuked. And as you can see, in the settlement I exported, I had two beds in this room and nothing else. This is the original terminal from this settlement. To remove this, I have to go in and remove it manually. Now, you can do this after the fact if you want. There's nothing to stop you doing that. But this is one of the reasons I would generally go around a settlement probably scrap everything, to be honest, if I thought I didn't need it, and then import. There is one other option I would like to show you, and it's an option I don't recommend using at the time of making this video. It's an option to have animations during the import process. If I go to my Transfer Settlements tape, General Settings, and select Animations During Import. There we go. I now get these very cool animations where the pieces slide into place from the ground. And it is very cool, although it seems to make yeah. the process take a little longer. However, the reason I don't recommend it is it can be a little glitchy Hell at the yeah. time of making this video. Some items don't get moved into place. This generally happens yes. the larger the settlement is. 
but it, it can be slightly annoying. However, the mod author does think he can fix it. So by the time you watch this video, that Bingo. feature may actually be working as intended. And it does look very cool. Maybe the first few times you try it, you want to do that just for sheer coolness factor. However, as you can see, I'm missing a few pieces right here. But honestly, once you've done this process several times, the chances are you're going to turn that off anyway, as it does make the process take a few seconds longer, although it really isn't that long a process anyway. One of the great things about this mod is it will allow you to import other people's settlements. So, for example, there is a YouTuber called Oxhorn who does a lot of settlement building and he has already posted one of his settlements on the Nexus and you can import it to your game. The process is pretty simple, although do note, you are going to need all of the mods that the author in question has used when building that settlement. So for example, to use this particular blueprint, you will need all of these mods. Using Oxhorn's blueprint is actually pretty easy. You could download using Nexus Mod Manager and it will work, although it will insist upon replacing the fifth blueprint. If you are the sort of person who'd rather have more control or you're already using the fifth slot and you want to use a different slot, I recommend you download manually. Download this file manually and I'm going to download to my desktop. There it is. I'm going to extract it here. And if I go inside, I can see it's been structured correctly. Data, F4SE, plugins, transfer settlements, blueprints. And as you can see, it's got a five. Now, what you've got to do is you've got to get this JSON file into your data folder. Your data folder can be found well, for me, it's Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fallout 4, and then Data. F4SE, Plugins, Transfer Settlements, Blueprints. As you can see, I have got one blueprint under one. I could copy his five straight across, and then if I want, just rename this to two. That is now my second blueprint. If I had used Nexus Mod Manager, it would have already been there as five. As I said, I'd prefer to keep control of which blueprints get which number. Once in game, I now have a second blueprint. If I select this, it will tell me where it is, how many items there are. And if I click on OK, it will also give me a long list of the third party plugins that are required for this blueprint. So you wanna pay attention to these. You can ignore this warning if you like, but be warned any objects added by these mods will not be present and therefore the settlement will not look the way it was supposed to look when the guy who built it built it. Now this mod does have a variety of other options, but I'm going to leave you to discover those yourself. I think they're probably fairly self-explanatory. Hopefully from this video, you now have the information you need to import and export settlements without any problems. And you can now reshape the Commonwealth without necessarily having to do all of the building yourself. I hope the video was helpful and at least mildly entertaining, and I hope you can join me for the next video, whatever and whenever that will be. I look forward to seeing you there, and until then, remember as always, have fun. If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com, and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings and filter by mods only. Click for search and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.